it's this oh okay welcome thank you for coming i have the pleasure this week of hosting the public health nursing students they're getting a graduate degree a master's degree in public health nursing at saint luke's university in tokyo and they are here uh to pres to present the eating habits and hypertension comparing Japan and the United States. And I'm just going to have each student introduce themselves with their first name and then go ahead and proceed. Thank you. Hello everyone. We are master honor student from the Graduate School of Nursing Science at St. Luke's International University in Tokyo, Japan. My name is Saki and I'm Minari. My name is Yuka. Today, we are going to talk about eating habits and hypertension, comparing Japan and the USA, and the Japanese healthcare system. You can see why we choose this topic. There are many patients with hypertension in Japan, and public health nurses have increasingly participated in providing guidance to improve, improve their eating habits. So we are interested in the difference between Japan and the USA, two countries with different culture and food intake. We divided our presentation into three parts. We will be speaking for about 30 minutes. And if you don't mind, we will be happy to answer your question at the end, end of our presentation. First, I'd like to talk about current state of eating habits and hypertension in Japan. I'll cover the following the contents. Okay, I'd like to talk, start by talking about Japanese eating habits and hypertension. What comes to your mind when you think of Japanese food? For example, sushi. Miso soup, teriyaki, Japanese pickles, and so on. As you know, Japanese food is low in calories. Also, Japanese food is characterized by its meal style, staple food, main dish, two side dishes, and soup. However, uh, sorry, it is an ideal, well-balanced meal as it provides all five major nutrition in one meal. However, Japanese food is high in salt and low in calcium. These are some of the bad points of Japanese food. According to National Health and Nutrition Survey in 2019, about 41.6% 40, for men and 26.7% for women eat out at least once a week. Also, 47.2% for men and 44.3% women take out at least once a week. We have many options when eating out or taking out our meat. If you choose a Japanese-style bento, you will get variety of nutrition, but it has a lot of sodium. If you choose a salad bowl, you will be cutting back on calories and sodium. However, if you choose a tempura or noodle, you will consume a lot of calories and sodium. Let's take a look at these figures. According to the National Nutrition and Living Survey conducted in 2018, the average salt intake is 10.1 gram, that is 10.9 gram for men and 9.3 gram for women. The number of the decreasing because of the influence of mass media and the sales of gross sodium products. Although these numbers have decreasing significantly over the Ten, past 10 years, the value remain high. What are the sources of salt among the Japanese people? According to the survey, approximately 70% of our salt intake comes from the seasoning, such as soy sauce, miso, and salt. 
The sources of salt intake vary by generation. Older people consume more salt seasoning and Japanese pickles, and younger people consume more salt from processed food, such as instant noodle and curry roux. This diagram, this diagram conceptually represents the cause of hypertension. Many studies have shown that excessive intake of sodium or salt is associated with increased blood pressure. Although epidemiological studies are being conducted to investigate the relationship between salt intake and high blood pressure. The dietary intake standards for Japanese 2022 edition states that target amount of salt for preventing the onset of lifestyle-related disease is less than 7.5 gram per day for men and less than 6.5 gram per day for women. However, the WHO guideline recommends that daily salt intake of less than 5.0 gram per day. This means that the Japanese values are higher than the WHO guidelines. So let's look at this, this graph. Approximately 30% of men and 25% of women have hypertension in Japan. It is estimated that there are approximately 43 million people in Japan with hypertension. If hypertension is left untreated, the chances of developing heart disease and stroke will increase. But many people don't receive treatment because they have no symptom. In recent years, the number of obese and hypertensive patients have increased among men in Japan. This may be because of the westernization of their dietary habits. Next. I'd like to describe the diagnostic criteria for hypertension in Japan. Hypertension is a state in which is a systolic or a diastolic blood pressure rise above the standard value, and the clinic blood pressure is 140 over 90 millimeter of mercury or higher. Recently, Home blood pressure is considered to be more important, and if there is a discrepancy between clinic blood pressure and home blood pressure, emphasis should be placed on home blood pressure. And hypertension is classified into class 1, 2, and 3 based on blood pressure values. Also, the guide guidelines for hypertension treatment in Japan states that the patient with hypertension are more likely to develop brain, heart, and kidney vascular disease. So it is necessary to control blood pressure levels within the standard range. Furthermore, the onset and exacerbation of hypertension is based on the interaction between lifestyle and genetic factors. Therefore, improving lifestyle habits, including diet, is important not only for improving high blood pressure and preventing it from becoming more severe, but also for preventing the onset of hypertension. Next, I'd like to talk about resources related to hypertension treatment in Japan. The National Health Promotion Measure in Japan, entitled Health Japan 21, the second term, aims to reduce the average systolic blood pressure of Japanese people by 4 mm of mercury over, over 10 years by promoting measure involving diet, physical activity, and alcohol consumption. It is estimated that this will reduce the number of deaths from stroke by approximately 10,000 per year, and the number of deaths from coronary artery disease by approximately 5,000 per year. To achieve this goal, a high-risk approach that targets people with high blood pressure is insufficient, and the population approach is needed that shifts the blood pressure distribution across the population towards the lower, level, lower levels. Sorry. 
The contents of the population approach include the following. For example, raw sodium products are sold in Japan, raw sodium soy sauce, and raw sodium instant ramen. Also, many recipe books for raw sodium dishes have been published in the last few years. The use of IoT means that an individual can utilize his or her smartphone apples to monitor blood pressure and receive guidance from medical professions. In addition to the population approach, it is necessary to promote the high-risk approach at the same time. Specific, specific health checkup and specific health guidance, which began in 2008, are important pillars. In 2015, each medical insurer started a data health plan in which they analyze medical receipts and medical examination data to enable better planning and evaluation. To sum up, Japanese eating habits involve the conception of an ideal, well-balanced meal that provides all me five major nutrition in one meal. However, Japanese food is high in salt. Japanese people take in about 10.1 gram of salt per day. Approximately 30% of Japanese people have high blood pressure. Health Japan 21, the second term, aims to reduce the average systolic blood pressure of the Japanese people by around 4 mm of mercury over 10 years. To achieve this, it is necessary to advance both a population approach and a high-risk approach. Thank you. Next, Yuka will talk about the current state of eating habits of hypertension in the USA based on report in the literature. And there is a my reference. Thank you. Hello, I'm Yuka Yasuda. It's a pleasure to be with you all. After Saki's description of, of current state of eating habits and hypertension in Japan, let me share what I have found regarding the current state of eating habits and hypertension in the USA. I will be covering the following topics. Let me first touch on American eating habits and hypertension. I will discuss American eating habits regarding the aspect of fast food chains and American grocery stores. And also, it seems that many fast food chains tend to serve foods high in calories, fats, sugars, and sodium, sodium and, but low in vitamins and minerals. It is likely that these restaurants contribute to the poor diet of an um, average American. Nutritious foods like fresh fruits, vegetables, and lean meats are often more expensive than packaged foods in many American grocery stores. Packaged foods tend to contain higher amounts of sodium, refined grains, sugar, and unhealthy oils than the recommended amounts set by the dietary guidelines for Americans. Interestingly, there are also more options when it comes to packaged foods. Whole isos are dedicated to chips alone, but healthier options seem to be limited to a smaller section of some grocery stores. The dietary guidelines for Americans state that the average American diet consists of excess sodium, saturated fat, refined grains, and calories from solid fats and added sugars. Furthermore, the guidelines state that Americans eat less vegetables, fruits, whole grains, dairy products, and oils than recommended. There are the six risk factors of hypertension in the USA. 
age, race, ethnicity, weight, gender, lifestyle, and family history. In terms of hypertension data in the USA, about 45% of adults have hypertension. More black adults than white adults have hypertension. More adults aged 60 years and older than adults aged 40 to 59 years have hypertension. Nearly 4% of adolescents have hypertension. Hypertension can lead to other conditions ranging from arrhythmia to heart attack, stroke, and kidney diseases. In this article, African Americans are reported to have a low rate of engagement in hypertension prevention self-care behaviors. It was also reported that African American participants consider reducing stress as one of the strategies to prevent hypertension. However, the description of stressful life deferred by social economic status. The Tuskegee experiment causes a lack of trust in physicians as well as in African Americans. Social pressure is described as the biggest deterrent stopping them from engaging in behaviors believed to control blood pressure. They thought that adhering to dietary weight and activity recommendations would be perceived by other African Americans are acting white. Next, I will discuss the blood pre sorry, discuss the diagnostic criteria for hypertension in the USA. This table shows the blood pressure classification recognized by JNC7 of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. The JNC7 report has introduced a classification that includes the term prehypertension. It is a classification recognized by the American Heart Association. These categories have the five blood pressure ranges. The American Heart Association has redefined hypertension. Hypertension stage one is a new category. Finally, I will talk about resources for hypertension treatment in the USA. The prevention of hypertension involves having a healthy lifestyle. It is important to keep in good condition physically and mentally. One of the treatments for hypertension is following the dietary approaches to stop the hypertension, or we call it DASH eating plan. The associated diet is rich in potassium and calcium and low in dietary sodium and the associated activity includes, includes physical activity and moderation of alcohol consumption. Another therapy is medication. Public health approaches can achieve a downward shift in the distribution of a population's blood pressure such as reducing calories, saturated fat, and salt in processed foods, and increasing community school opportunities for physical activity. The Genesis 7 endorses the American Public Health Association resolution that food manufacturers and restaurants should reduce sodium in their food supply by 50% over, over the next decade. To increase the acceptability of public health intervention strategies by the community, it is important to address the diversity of racial, ethnic, cultural, linguistic, religious, and social factors in the delivery of services. 
Here are my references in case you want to further explore these topics. So far, we described the Japanese and American eating habits and hypertension. From here, I will make a comparison between Japan and the USA. Some similarities of diets between Japan and the USA include high salt in low, low in potassium. There are not many differences in the blood pressure classification and hypertension treatment between Japan and the USA. Notably, Japan's classification has more blood pressure class categories. Overall, a definitive comparison between Japan and the USA cannot just be simply made because of the differences in cultural and social demographic backgrounds. Thank you for listening. Next, Minori will tell you tell more about the Japanese healthcare system. Thank you. Hello, I'm Minari. Uh, let's uh, sorry. Let's move on to the next topic. From here, I'll be talking about the Japanese healthcare system. I will cover the following contents. Uh, first, I'll provide an overview of the medical service regime in Japan. This is an overview of the medical service regime in Japan. Medical services in Japan are essentially based on the public insurance system. As you can see here, uh, the left side uh, is mainly about the medical insurance system. The upper left corner shows the co-payment ratio according to the age of the insured person. Here in the insurance section in the lower center shows the type of insurance system, the number of each insured and the number of enrollees. And on the right side is the medical care delivery system. There are three main characteristics of Japan's medical service system. First, the system covers all citizens through a universal health insurance system. Second, the system is free access. Third, the system provides benefits in kind. These characteristics will be introduced one by one in the slide that follows. So the Japanese healthcare system is a universal health insurance system. All citizens are covered by public medical insurance, and each person contributes to the insurance premiums and supports it by helping each other. All citizens are automatically enrolled. Public, public medical insurance can be divided into three major categories. One, two, three. Uh, employee insurance for those employed by company and national health insurance, also as no, uh, known as uh, community insurance for farmers, freelancers, non-regular employees, and retirees. Uh, and late stage medical care system for the elderly, which covers all persons aged 75 years or older. The second characteristics of the Japanese healthcare system is free access. Patients are free to choose a medical institution as long as they have a single insurance card. The third characteristics of the Japanese healthcare system is benefits in kind. Patients can equally receive necessary medical services or benefits in kind such as medical treatment and drug benefits 
with only a counterpayment. Being a benefit in kind reduces the burden on patients who pay high drug costs. Based on the social insurance system, the government spends the public subsidy to maintain universal health insurance coverage. Incidentally, our country has realized the world's highest level of life expectancy and health care standards through the universal health insurance coverage system. Japan believes that it is necessary to continuously ensure a safe and secure living of all its citizens by firmly maintaining the universal health insurance coverage with the current social insurance system. Uh, here are some statistical data from Taekun's OECD online database. This figure shows the life expectancy at birth by sex over 2021 and 2022 or nearest year. This figure shows the main causes of mortality by country for 2021 or nearest year. Second, I'll talk on some issue about the Japanese healthcare system. The population of Japan has, in fact, entered a declining phase in recent years. In 2065, it is estimated the total population will fall below 90 million and the aging rate will be in the 38% range. Next, this figure shows the changes in health expenditure. You can see that it is increasing every year. One important issue regarding Japan's healthcare system is the increased cost of health care uh, the increased cost of health care for its aging population. As the working age population begins to decline, it is necessary to consider how Japan's healthcare system can be maintained. Third, I'll present Japan's effort to reduce healthcare costs. The government's effort in reducing health care costs can be described in four points. First, promote the use of generic drugs. Second, optimize duplicate medication and multiple drug administration. Third, review specific health checkups and health guidance. And fourth, handle hospitalization medical expenses. On the other hand, there are, some thing, there are some things that Japanese citizens work on to help reduce healthcare costs, including these items. First, do not engage in doctor shopping. Second, do not see a doctor like going into a convenience store. Third, apply medical checkups and measures to address results and behavior changes. Fourth, use pharmaceuticals appropriately and fifth, your generic drugs. Let's take a look at the specific flow of medical treatment in Japan. Uh, he, uh, so here, he is an office worker. The company deducts social insurance premiums from his paycheck. During an emergency, when sudden chest pain occur, he is taken to a hospital by ambulance. There he is seen in the emergency room. Eventually, he is admitted to the hospital. Then he undergoes cardiocatheterization. If the prognosis is good, the patient receives a discharge prescription and is discharged. The patient pays the co-payment amount at hospital counter.
he is then discharged from the hospital. There, are, uh, this is, this uh, is the sequence of events that lead to a patient admittance and discharge from a hospital. Thank you for listening. I hope I have enlightened you regarding the Japanese healthcare system. If you have any question, I'll be glad to answer them. Please let us know how it works in the US. Here is the reference. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, you mentioned in the first section that you had like two approaches, like a population approach versus high risk factor um, candidates. I didn't really understand the difference in how you're going to go about that. Is right. Yeah, you had a slide where there was um two circles at the bottom. Yeah, this one. So I didn't understand like how you're going to differentiate the two and what the, what approach you would take. So the. Is there a dif difference? Yeah, I don't really know what you mean by a population approach, how you, what you uh, do there versus the high risk approach. Uh, I see, so population approach is uh, the people have, uh, people don't have the hypertension now, but they have the risk, have hypertension or another lifestyle disease. So all of the people in Japan approach is population approach, but high risk approach is uh, some of our target. Uh, uh, high risk approach is uh, so the specific, this specific health checkup uh the you know, target um, what she's saying is that the population approach is prevention and so high risk they had a list of medications and ways of uh ways of treating once it's diagnosed so there's people that are high risk already have the diagnosis and the population approach is for everyone and it's preventative minded. They did a lot of social media and public awareness on dietary habits. And the specific health step group are conducted for people between 40 to 74 years old. So they have, they have the more risk and hypertension and some lifestyle related disease. So, yes. So, I really, <laughs> thank you. There's people online. It's already on. Talked about uh, the population approach as, as well as the high risk approach and the money that it costs, like for the cardiac catheterization, you have to pay $2,000. So there must be uh, people that cannot afford that. Like in the United States, we have a lot of low income people who have hypertension as well as other chronic diseases, and they do not have health insurance. So how does that work in Japan if you are very poor and not able to pay those deductibles? What happens? How, how is that taken care of?
そう、ジャパニカ。あ、あでも多分これっていうよりかは、多分。いや、そう、インジャパン、そう、ポアピーポーは、like medicate、and medicate、あ、medicate って言うんですか。medication、and the similar system has、yes、uh, Japan has similar system。So the, they are. Free. Free. Ah, so they are free of medical cost. So they have treatment and、uh, medication for the hypertension. Are those services available for?、Uh, just to follow up with her question, are those services also provided to、uh, non citizens of Japan? Meaning, if there are like immigrants who are maybe a foreign worker and may not have the resources provided by their, their employer for insurance premium, what kind of a subsidized?、Um, Subsidies they may get if they need treatment in Japan. For, for immigrant or for. Yes, for, for example,、uh, uh, I, I, I went to Japan and、um, I'm a tourist and、mm -hmm. I got injured and I, I seek medical help.、Uh -huh. And I don't have money. For foreign resident, uh, 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 in case foreign resident, uh, also uh, uh, Japanese, uh, so same,、uh, same as Japanese,、uh, take a medical care. They'll cover the uh, 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 treatment, but my question is how about the expense? Do, do they have to pay? Yeah, uh, mm, uh, uh, work, work, it depends. Uh, it depends. It depends. What? Ah, so, so this. It depends. Ah,、uh, it depends. <laughs> my 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 next question is relevant to the the slides here, um, and the the utilization of、uh, health information technology in Japan. Um, here in the United States, we we have a an approach that we we call the、uh, health information literacy, and incorporating it with technology to provide. Um, education to the population about preventions and treatment, and that way they they will understand、uh, and have more、um, knowledge about how they would manage, especially if they have chronic illnesses. And one of the ways that that we do that is by utilizing technology by、um, allowing them to use smartphones to monitor their their blood pressure and their their health,、uh, be able to access their、uh, information through patient. Uh, portals.、Um, <clears throat> how does that system work in Japan, where the information technology is incorporated in the system that as a as a tool to help to to prevent、um, you know illness and and maintain their health. As as an example, as, as an example, like、uh, a lot of people nowadays,、uh, I would guess adults have phones, and on their phones they may have a,、um, a health app devices that can track their blood pressures,、uh, that they can also communicate with their physicians or the clinic if they want to make an appointment, and then also can retrieve any information if they have any. 
lab work that they wanted to see the results or any diagnostic procedures are I'm assuming that those are also available in Japan with the technologies that we have. Uh, I guess one of my question is for the older population, what are some of the challenges in implementing those system if they are primarily, you know, not native, uh, digital natives, meaning they may not have familiarity with using those devices, especially if they live in the rural areas. So the some some phys oh. uh, 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 some physician inform to the patient uh, the for example this one or the using smartphone the apple the, they inform the, to he his or her patients. Uh, public health nurse also inform. Uh, in Japan, the company has public health nurse. Company also has uh, not all company, but some of company has public health nurse. So public health nurse inform for the employee. Uh, the some information to using develop device. テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信中ですね。テレビ電話しに配信
promote more uh more life expectancy is longer 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 uh do you understand <laughs> sorry <laughs> Are there any more questions? It's a hypothetical. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.